Despite the relentless pressures of enclosures, the drive to privatize and market everything that we share, there's hundreds of different types of commons flourishing around the world. A rich and vibrant commons verse offers attractive ways of meeting needs while escaping some nasty dependencies of the enormous market state system that's often very much out of control. Besides the many commons focused on land, city spaces, digital networks, and many others, there's hundreds of thousands of traditional and indigenous commons out there. They've been taking care of people for centuries, even millennia, before the word commons was coined. Let's pause for a moment and point out that cooperation has been the default form of human provisioning and governance since time immemorial. We've lost track of the commons, however. We've lost memory of it. It's been erased. And that's one reason we need the idea and vocabulary of the commons, to help us name some near-forgotten practices that let people meet their needs directly and collectively outside of the circuits of capitalism and the state. But how exactly does commoning work? Well, to understand it, we have to first give up the idea that commons are mostly about resources. We have to realize that commons are primarily social systems. We saw earlier how the tragedy of the commons story treats commons as resources open to anyone, in effect, an open access regime. But this is not a commons. A commons is a self-organized social system, a group of people who've decided that they want to take care of something that's vitally important to them. Their goal is to protect it and manage it for the benefit of everyone, fairly, transparently, and for the long term, without markets or states dictating how it'll be run. Once we see commons as systems of social relations, and not just resources, things start to get really interesting because we start to see that a commons is about how we re relate to each other and our values and behaviors as a group. It's about our relations to the earth and to past and future generations. A commons is a space in which we build a flourishing, satisfying life, a social space in which we strive for wholeness as human beings. Suddenly, we can begin to see the absurd fictions that lie at the heart of standard economics. For example, the idea that we human beings are isolated individuals without history or culture or shared interests. The idea that humans act rationally when they selfishly take as much as they can and don't care about anyone else. The presence of countless commons in everyday life refutes this idea. We are a cooperative species. And yet, why then is competitive exploitation so pervasive? How exactly do commons uphold a different way of being and knowing and doing? How do diverse personalities and priorities get aligned in the commons? How do things get made and grown and care provided without the exchange of money? If people aren't consumers or employees working in rigid hierarchies of power, how can we structure peer-driven, horizontal systems of cooperation? That's what this module is all about, understanding the dominant patterns of commoning. This requires us to learn a new vocabulary, some new concepts, and even a new world view. We need to slip the shackles of market individualism and understand how different regimes of production and governance can work. Let's get to it.